Hello and welcome. In this video, take a moment, read it, try it out, and then press play when you're ready to solve it with me. All right, so Sean wrote the equation below. Is it true? Explain. Okay, so what does this equation say? It says the square root of negative 5 times the square root of negative 20 equals the square root of 100. So what's going on here? Well, first of all, there is a law of exponents that's gen generally written as the square root of a times the square root of b equals the square root of ab. So for example, this becomes really important uh, in many kind of problems in reverse and directly. So for example, uh, if we have the square root of 4 times the square root of 9, that should equal the square root of 4 times 9, which is true. The square root of 4 times 9 is 36, and that equals 6, right? And the square root of 4, just to check this, is 2. The square root of 9 is 3, and that equals 6. So this seems to work, right? Um, and it also is important in reverse. If you have the square root of, let's say, 8, and you're just told to reduce it, you think, well, okay, well, that equals the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, and the square root of 4 is 2. We can't write down the square root of 2 anymore, and we know these things are equivalent. But it turns out that with negative numbers, if, if, we're, if we're multiplying two square roots of negative numbers, this isn't always going to make sense. So in this problem, we can see why. If we rewrite our first terms as the square root of 5 times the square root of negative 1, and the second term as the square root of 20 times the square root of negative 1, and then here we'll leave the square root of 100 as it is for now. So now on the left-hand side, the square root of uh, negative 1 is i. So in both cases, we have an i term. So we have i times the square root of 5 times 20 can be broken into further pieces. I'll put i right there, square root of 4 times the square root of 5. And then here's the square root of 100. So i times the square root of 5 times i times 2 times the square root of 5 equals um, square root of 100. Now here we're multiplying, so we have i times i, which is i squared. Uh, we're multiplying 2 out, but there's no corresponding number to multiply it by, and then the square root of 5 squared is being multiplied. Okay, so let's just keep going with what we know about this. So i squared is negative 1, then we're multiplying by 2, and then by the square root of 5 squared, which is 5. So here we can see something happening. We have the we have negative 10 on the left here, and the square root of 100 on the right. Now, the way you interpret the square root of 100, typically you only grab the positive root if nothing is written in front. But even if you interpret it as plus or minus, there would be two results. And on the left here, we only have a negative 10, so they're not equal. Right? These are not equal things. So uh, look out for that when you're multiplying um, the the roots of negative numbers. You have to be careful with this law. This doesn't. This law seems to break when a and b are negative. So we can say, all right, well, a and b have to be greater than or equal to zero. All right. Thank you.